Hello everyone and welcome to our webinar providing secure access for remote work. Thank you for joining us as everyone is still joining and getting settled. I'll go over a few housekeeping items. Please think of questions throughout the webinar and direct them to the Q&A section. We have a team on hand to help answer them throughout and I'll also pick up any additional questions at the end. This webinar will be recorded and we'll share the recording with you shortly after we have finished. If we don't get to all of your questions, we'll follow up with you afterwards. And reaching out to info at jamf.com will also get you in contact with someone at Jamf quickly. With the housekeeping out of the way, let's get started. My name is Aaron Webb and I work in product marketing here at Jamf, focusing on security. I'm delighted to be here today to share this session with you as we dive into the topic providing secure access for remote work. Before we dive into the content of the session, let me quickly run through the agenda of what we'll be covering today. For those that might be new to Jamf or those who already know Jamf for our management solutions, will we kick off with a quick overview of Jamf and how we had both management and security solutions? Will we then look at the choices of where your business and productivity apps reside whether that is on your own servers, hosted in the cloud, or a hybrid model. We'll then discuss considerations for how remote workers access resources and the experience they expect balanced against organization security. Up next will be legacy VPNs and modern alternatives, and then we'll finish up with the security considerations for both corporate owned and BYO devices in the enterprise to access productivity apps. I'll then deliver a brief recap before opening it up to Q&A. Before we begin, I want to give you a brief overview about who we are and what we do here at Jamf. Our purpose is to simplify work. And we do this by creating enterprise secure solutions that are consumer simple and protect the privacy of your users. More than 72,500 organisations rely on Jamf to manage over 30 million devices. Our stats highlighted here as of May 2023 show just some of the industries we support in the enterprise space. We also help many schools, colleges, universities, hospitals, healthcare providers and of course small to medium businesses across the globe succeed with Apple. So how do we do this? We provide solutions that manage and secure Apple at work, whether that's a school, bank, hospital, hotel, a company of a handful of workers, or a large organization spanning the world. And we're the only company in the world that provides complete management and security for an Apple first environment. Our ability to manage, secure, and extend the Apple experience with deep integrations with Microsoft, Google, Okta, and AWS, as well as many, many more companies, help to deliver a complete experience in the workplace, wherever that may be. And we have a long history of delivering same day support, so you can ensure that you can support your users the day Apple releases new features and security updates and continue to be productive and secure in your work. And customers think highly of the products, services and support we continue to provide since we started over 20 plus years ago. So that's a brief overview of Jamf, but before we dive straight into the locations of applications used in the workplace, let's have a look at some of the stats to set the scene for remote work. The modern workplace has changed and the way we work has evolved past the infrastructure that many organisations have in place today. Although many organisations have, have transitioned employees back into offices, there is still a hybrid model in place for the majority of organisations. Whether that may be one or two days working from home, the choice of flexible working, or to reduce costs and overheads in certain locations and offer remote options to workers from home or shared workspaces near to their homes. Whatever the reasoning and decisions each company has put in place, we've seen a growing trend. Remote work has quadrupled over the last decade and 70% no longer sit behind a desk. 85% of workloads are now in the cloud with 72% of businesses looking at zero trust solutions. 
And interestingly, 89% of users are willing to make a salary sacrifice for a device choice. So let's push on and, divide, and dive into some of the challenges, considerations and solutions that businesses must face in this growing change of where, and more importantly, how people work. The first consideration is where the applications your employees use for work reside. And then the need to consider both support for on-prem and software as a service apps for remote work. First, let's define on-premise. Now, on-premise refers to hosting a website or a software on a physical server instead of in the cloud, which is often preferred by companies that want complete control over their data, including how it's backed up and protected. Software as a service, or SaaS on the other hand, is a cloud-based delivery model for software applications and services. And this model is widely used by businesses to implement enterprise applications such as customer relationship management, human resources, content management systems, computer-aided computer -aided design, and much more. Now, according to Fortune Business Insights, the global SaaS market is expected to increase by 27.5% between 2021 and 2028, reaching a value of $716.52 billion. SaaS operations can be accessed from anywhere via the internet, usually through a subscription, and use cloud storage for their data storage. Then there's the hybrid model, where some organizations have a combination of the two. So let's look so let's take a look at the pros and cons for each. Let's start with the pros for on-prem. Now, you might feel that you are more secure knowing that your data is physically low stored within your four walls and having visibility of your data because you know where it's stored can feel comforting. You're not limited to the availability or otherwise of any broadband. And the initial costs are lower because you don't have the ongoing subscription costs. Now, on-premise tends to work better for people who don't trust the cloud or the cloud software vendors. So what about SaaS? Now, your immediate costs could be lowered since you only pay for what you need and you don't need the IT infrastructure like server and maintenance costs to, be, uh, to have them in place. Now, you don't need to worry about becoming version locked or having to upgrade the software a few years down the line because SaaS software is updated multiple times a year depending on who your vendor is. And updates are simply published out to users as part of the subscription costs. It's also easier to upscale SaaS. You simply add on users and functionality as your business grows and develops. You don't need to worry about business continuity or security since the world's leading software vendors will take care of that as part of your annual subscription. And finally, it's more environmentally friendly with reports suggesting that ICT accounts for uh, 7.1 billion tonnes of CO2 emissions. But what about hybrid benefits? Well, it's good if you want to store sensitive information on premise, but still get the benefits of cloud and cloud security for other data. Now, you can also get the best of both worlds in relation to your software choice. And if you need to transfer or download large image files uh, or for large files, it can be easier with the speed of internal Ethernet rather than with Internet. So that's the pros. But let's have a look at the downsides for each. And let's start with on prem again. Now, the total cost of ownership is more over the long run. In fact, by about year two or year three, you'll find that the cost of on-premise starts to balance and then overtake. And this is principally because of the cost of the IT infrastructure and the upgrades, which start to have an impact. Working off-site is achievable, but it's harder. And it usually is via a VPN line with a push and pull of data back and forth from the server. But typically, you will experience latency and frequent interruption. Now, Another downside is most of the software vendors have acknowledged that traditional on-premise model is something they don't want to invest in and place their eggs in the cloud basket. Now, for traditional on-premise providers, they're going to start to move away from um, actually supporting those on-premise solutions and then start to develop more for their cloud solutions. But what about SaaS disadvantages? Well, you need to get used to that recurring fee being annual, and it's not a pay-and-keep model. Your data doesn't live within your four walls. 
Instead, it will be in your vendor's data center. And while most data centers will be incredibly secure and compliant with all most common security protocols, some people like the comfort of keeping their data on premise. Now, you can also expect your software bill to grow with your business. So the cost should be sustainable and in line with your business growth. But you need to be prepared for that increasing costs. And lastly, the disadvantages of hybrid is that it's difficult to get a really tight integrations between hybrid products. You will probably have to accept and, uh, that there will be some gaps in that. It's also time consuming, labor intensive to set up a hybrid model and you need to hire skilled IT employees to make sure that you can support both in-house and hosted software. And finally, it's costly. You'll be paying a lump sum and then that ongoing annual license fees that you get with those SaaS applications. Now, those three models don't even include private cloud, which just shows the complexity of where business applications your workers are accessing uh, are. And with remote work being the new modern workplace, it brings additional challenges in security. Now, the challenges that come with not only managing those business applications, but with device choice, securing business data and mitigating against uh, cyber attacks and data breaches, and of course, user experience. Now, all of these are interlocked. So how can we offer a successful remote access solution that makes it easy for employees to seamlessly access work resources? And why is it important that we support both on-prem and SaaS applications? Firstly, I want to share a quote about why you want to consider seamless and secure access. And that quote is from Steve Jobs and grounds us on the importance of the end user experience and the fact that we should work backwards to implementing the right solution. Now, planning for the end user and working backwards to deliver experience for your workers, regardless of where they are located, but still remaining secure in the workplace. And that means that you need to have a vision and you need to prioritize. And with a unified approach, often IT and InfoSec teams work in silo. Now bringing teams together for better vis visibility across your entire stack will only help drive forward your vision and execute your plan. But to remain secure and protect your business data and users from evolving threats, it's not just about tools. It's also about building and developing a culture that is security aware, making it streamlined and productive for workers. Otherwise, they will put down their work issue devices and use something else, something that helps them be more productive, but is not business appropriate or secure. And finally, automation and reducing manual efforts is going to provide a quicker response and reduce workload on both IT and InfoSec, which goes to that point earlier around working together. Nearly every organisation will have a VPN and believe that this is a fantastic approach to support remote workers. And it was. But as the security risks increase, budgets get squeezed and teams need to do more with less and retain staff and productivity. What's the solution to support the modern workplace? Well, let's take a look at why moving away from legacy VPNs to a modern VPN or zero trust network access solution can offer improved deployments, faster workflows and cost savings. Before, before we start looking at the end user benefits of zero trust and implementing a modern VPN in more detail, it's worth just considering for a moment how current solutions are affecting user experience and productivity. Now, VPN has got a bit of a bad rep recently, but it has served businesses well for over the past 30 years or so. But sadly, in more recent times, its limitations have been exposed. Now, many customers are familiar with the concept of VPN and see ZTNA as the same thing, but with a fancier name. However, there are some differences. The VPN provides a backdoor into an enterprise based on allowed IP addresses the user gets connected to a network. Once you gain access to the VPN, you can move sideways laterally to access apps and data that you shouldn't be able to access. 
The second big drawback of legacy VPN is the management overhead. Now, hardware needs to be managed and replicated. Certificates need to be managed and distributed. And managing bandwidth requirements are very costly. Lastly is the user experience. Now, which is actually one of the biggest detractors from deploying remote access VPN, especially on mobile. Now, VPN worked well when everyone was in the office and all resources were within an organization's own network. Not only does tunnel establishment take time, but with bandwidth constrictions and so much traffic destined for the uh, Internet, bringing traffic into the LAN only to be routed back out makes no sense. Now, when devices change network interface from like 4G to wi to Wi-Fi or the screen timer kicks in, a user often has to re-establish the VPN connection. But even if a VPN addresses all of your security risks, one remains. The user has to actually connect to a VPN. Often, reluctant or simply lack of knowledge on how to connect to a VPN leads organizations to put their data at risk by not placing it within secured boundaries of the network to ensure that users can access the information. And this has never been more true than with cloud apps and services. So let's take a look at ZTNA and how it works. Now here is the Gartner definition of ZTNA. Essentially, ZTNA is a collection of principles, software, security tools, and policies. Many organizations, including us here at Jamf, market a ZTNA solution but it should be considered as a building block in your overall organization security, not a total solution, especially if you're also on a journey to manage and secure Mac and or mobile in your organization. Now, if you remember nothing else from what I say here on in, please take this one idea with you. The fundamental idea with ZTNA is that no trust is assumed and both users and devices should always be checked and verified before access to resources is granted. So let's take a look at the principles of ZTNA. And the first element in any modern access solution is rooted in identity. The very premise is to never trust any access request until verified. Now identity is that first check. Integration with your identity provider or identity access management solution is a must to ensure that only valid users authenticate to that service and allow businesses to leverage those investments. Now, each application should have its own access policy. This embraces the concept of not giving users access to the entire network, thus preventing lateral movement and by its nature enforces least privilege. I've talked about identity being a core pillar of zero trust. Now, identity is the first checkpoint on the access journey for a user. But beyond that, our customers can factor in additional context to drive a more secure access policy, such as the role of the user, their location, and most importantly, the risk level of the device looking to gain access. Now, concept, context should be regularly checked so that access can be granted or revoked based on the changing risk on any device. From a manageability perspective, any implementation should make things an, uh, as easy and streamlined as possible for the teams managing the solution. No on-device certificates to distribute or manage, no on-premise hardware to set up and manage, no new identities or users accounts to be set up. Another key principle of Zero Trust is hiding applications from public discovery. Access is then restricted by a trust broker to customers' applications and services. Now, the broker verifies the identity, security context and policies adherence of the specified participants and device before granting access. And it can deliver traffic to cloud service or on-prem if connected directly. Now, some ZTNA solutions can achieve single packet authentication, which not only means that the service works incredibly fast, but a change of network between cellular and Wi-Fi or between two Wi-Fi networks 
won't break that user connection, creating a seamless end user experience. And then we've got dynamic split tunnel, and it has many other names. But in essence, we're talking about the separation of business application traffic from the general internet traffic. Now, this gives assurance, especially in a contractor or BYOD use case, that only business applications that are routed via zero trust rules and all the other internet traffic either goes out directly to the internet or perhaps via your secure web gateway. Now, users can be happy that no personal data is routed and organizations are happy that they don't have to manage additional backhaul, backhaul of all that non-business traffic. But what are the benefits? Many businesses have already started the journey towards supporting remote working in a different way. Rethinking their current stack, solution to completely flip IT policy to enable people to remain productive outside the office network. Organizations are leaning into the principles of ZTNA to create a new working model for their employees. At the heart of all this is security and ZTNA solutions can add to it in a number of ways. With Work Anywhere, ZTNA goes up a layer, providing application security that is independent of the network and access to these applications is based on least privilege, so users only gain access to the applications that they should be able to. Now, this benefit uh, benefits business by stopping malicious actors from both inside and outside the business from being able to access all areas. A compromised device or a set of credentials don't provide the keys to the castle. Now, by looking at a trust broker model, organizations can secure traffic both uh, cloud and on-prem applications and services with direct connectivity to the internet or via dedicated tunnels from the broker to a data center or virtual application. Then split tunneling or traffic ensures that user data remains private and not and is not streamed through the broker or via the LAN. And why both mention and um, why both of the mentioned security benefits allow organizations to empower users to work anywhere connect to any service, whether on-prem or in the cloud, the real magic of where Zero uh, Trust Solutions is that they continually access, uh, assess the security state of the device. Now, by using a security of a device as a factor in the risk assessment when deciding to grant access to an application or services, organizations can evaluate their security and reduce their exposure to risk. Now, it could be as simple as blocking users from business uh, critical apps or services while they run a vulnerable version of an OS on their device, or perhaps they have installed or, or sideloaded a third party app, uh, or maybe have just uh, joined a risky Wi Fi network that is attempting a man in the middle attack. Organizations can weigh each risk or threat factor against user experience and business productivity to create policies on a per group or per app basis rather than a one-size-fits-all approach. It's, fant it's fantastic talking about all the benefits that ZTNA will bring for the security team and the delight that the end users will experience as they get the best devices with their out-of-the-box experience. But what about the IT teams? Well, ZTNA can make their life simpler too. By simplifying how users connect to apps and services, Organizations can remove issues with scalability and performance of traditional VPN infrastructure for their users. Managing all hardware and infrastructure to run a VPN or VPNs can be expensive and time consuming um, and require a lot of effort from the IT and security teams. It can also impact the end user's ability to connect and stay productive when away from the office and potentially drive tickets to the service desk teams. Now, ZTNA provides IT and security teams with centralized control and improved flexibility to, to secure today's highly distributed IT environments, making the support of a large number of remote users easier and more secure. So let's take it back to the end user we spoke about earlier. A zero trust model which contains a trust broker allows organizations and therefore users to take advantage of connections that route through the broker and then directly towards the internet. With none of the latency or slow loading 
that compromises end user experience. And be in no doubt that end user experience is key now. As more Generation Z, those born between 1997 and 2012, enter the workplace, the devices they use, whether they are just mobiles, tablets or laptops, need to reflect the choices that they've made as consumers in their personal life. They have the expectation that devices just work. So keeping a device as close to possible to native helps deliver that familiar experience, originally championed by Zero Touch MDM deployment. Now ZTNA takes this a step further. By securing applications rather than the network, verification checks take place between a user, device and application moved to the trust broker. Now users can just open applications either downloaded from the App Store or made available via MDM or UEM and use a device in the same way they would use a personal device. There are many vendors in the ZTNA space and while there are a variety of implementations of the principles, most share the same characteristics. They require minimal user interaction to install and provide users with alerts to enable them to self-remediate issues. Now, as a device gets closer to that out-of-that-box experience, end users will feel more empowered to resolve issues themselves. Now, many have grown up with these devices and are quite tech savvy, and they are used to problem solving them themselves. They don't want to spend time speaking to an IT help desk. As an example, if I get blocked from Office 365 for not running the latest OS on my device or due to a malicious application, a service alert informing me of the issue allows me to take steps to remediate my device. And once back in compliance, I can still remain productive and access my Office 365 application. But what if a user wants to use their own device? Well, work devices aren't limited to company issue ones. An employee's work device is not only a company-issued laptop, it's any device that accesses work resources, including personally owned smartphones or tablets. That's bring your own device, whether you have a formal program or for BYOD or not. Users are already bringing their own devices to work, and the reality is that you don't have a choice about that. And this presents a serious security concern. IT can't protect devices that they don't know about. But you do have a choice to offer a formal and complete BYOD program that keeps data and network secure. A solution that keeps users happy and working productively, while also protecting their privacy and your data. So let's take a look. For many corporate owned devices, many organizations use a device management tool. An MDM, mobile device management, ensures that organizations can implement important management features consistently and securely, including the following. So implementing device management, configuring devices and users, and maintaining communication with managed devices. Now, MDM allows you to manage and enforce security policies, control access to company data, and remotely wipe devices in case of theft or loss. But you should ensure that you select the most comprehensive solution for your Apple devices. Ensure that you select an MDM partner that is known for the same day support, so that when that software update drops, you know that the tools that you have can support the updates to ensure your devices are compliant. Security baselines is a group of controls that an organization has agreed to configure on their devices. Now, once these are in place, they need to continuously verify that the controls remain in place and that the devices remain compliant. Now, this compliance scoring system is the security benchmark. For example, an organization might wish to establish the following control set. Now, that all Macs must be encrypted with FileVault or that all Macs must turn the screensaver on no more than five minutes after the last user interaction. And, and authentication will be required to wake from a screensaver. Or it might be that all Macs must disable Bluetooth sharing. Now this ensures that your devices are secure and compliant regardless of where the user is working. The implementation of encryption is critical security measure for protecting sensitive data on both Mac OS and mobile devices. Now, make sure to enable full disk, uh, full disk encryption on all devices and require strong passcodes or biometric, biometric authentication. Now, you can use Firebolt to encrypt information on your Mac, 
where Firevault encodes the, um, encodes the data on your startup disk so that unauthorized users can't access your information. But you can also make sure that you have strong password and passcodes depending on the device which you are using, which are regularly set to change. Now, for example, every 30 days. And you can make use of biometrics to harden the security of your devices. Which brings me on nicely to software updates. And it's best practice to ensure that you keep device operating systems up to date. When that's not possible, you need to be able to have visibility of those devices and implement policies to defer or force the update depending on the situation. Now, whatever your route, it's about making sure you have visibility over your compliance. Regularly updating the operating system, apps, and the software on all devices to ensure that you have the latest security patches and bug fixes. Now, MDM allows you to set up automatic updates on macOS and mobile devices to make that process easier. When it comes to mobile devices, you also need to think about the ownership model. Now, you may know that your corporate owned devices are compliant, but what about those devices owned by your employees? Well, it's about the right solution for the right time. And there are two ways to enroll personally owned devices with Jank Free YOD, for example. Account driven user enrollment and profile driven user enrollment. Now, account driven user enrollment is the new workflow leveraging Apple's framework to provide an improved experience by asking the user to do something that they've done many times. And that's go into settings app on their device and sign into an account. Now, profile driven user enrollment is the traditional method where IT sends the user a URL for enrollment into management. Now, both of these models have identical outcomes, just a different workflow to help ensure Mac and mobile devices are compliant. As organizations look at how to manage costs across the business, as well as looking to provide users with choice and flexibility in devices, BYOD is a theme we are seeing coming up time and time again. Now, often these devices are not managed via UEM or MDM, and they can create a huge problem for IT and security teams. However, organizations need to consider and define an approach to handle these devices, regardless of whether it's a single executive, a small development team, or potentially all users in the company. Now, the move to cloud or hybrid environments has also added to this problem. Without the right control on cloud services or apps, users can access from any untrusted device with valid user credentials, and this includes malicious actors. Now, the key and first step here is to hide the public face of these services, meaning that only certain devices will be able to present for authentication. Now, this can be achieved in a number of ways, but IP lockdown rules remain one of the most popular options. And here is where ZTNA comes in. Now, using that trust broker, devices will have to authenticate to the service, regardless of whether they are managed or BYOD device. The security posture will be checked when they initiate a connection to your cloud or on-prem service. Then they are provided an IP address to match the rules of your cloud services, enabling users to gain access. And where a BYOD device is being used, split tunnel rules can ensure that all traffic is routed appropriately. So you know a BYOD device is secure, end users are getting a device that they know and love, and more importantly, trust that their privacy is intact, all while supporting the cost efficiency to the organization. So what is the best practice for securing BYOD? First, it's to ensure that you educate employees. You need to define a BYOC security policy and even more importantly, take the time to educate the users about it. Users should clearly understand what they can and cannot do on their personal devices, why the security measures are important and what are the consequences of violating the policy. Separate personal and business data. Now, when employees use a device for business activities, a primary concern is privacy. A device can contain sensitive files or information which the employee does not want to share with their workplace. At the same time, sensitive business data stored on the device 
must be protected and accessible only to the employee. Now, whether containerization solutions are used or not, the BYOD policy should clearly state how to separate personal and business information and prevent unwanted exposure. You need to have a solution in place for a lost device. Now, if a device is lost or stolen, employees must importantly or immediately report it to their manager or IT department. IT needs to be prepared for the necessary actions such as a remote device lock, data wipe, password reset, and auto wipe for critical applications. The protocol for a device loss or theft should be clearly defined in the BYD policy and employees should be fully aware of it. And finally, ensure, connect, uh, ensure secure uh, network connectivity. If an employee is connected to the internet or public Wi-Fi, attackers can eavesdrop on business activities. Now, encourage employees to connect their equipment to a secure network, not just in the office, but also on the go. In any event, they should only connect to the corporate network via secured, encrypted virtual private network. You also need to continue to establish secure device baseline configurations. Now, this can be only allowing authorized applications to run on a device. For example, organizations may not want to allow the use of TikTok on the device, and that can be configured with an MDN, but you may want to also ensure that you have a layered approach with a mobile threat defense solution to calculate device risk score. Now, this can include jailbreak devices. This can be established across your entire mobile fleet and be specific to device types as well. So if you have Android in your organization, they can be configured to uh, can be configured and risk score differently to your iOS devices. Now, depending on the industry, you may have deskless workers or a majority of your workers may be remote. But how do you ensure they're using the correct applications and have an audit trail? Well, not only can you use tools to create device risk scores, but you can also ensure that you can protect user privacy and company data. You can block cyber attacks like phishing, malicious domains, risky apps, data leaks and insecure networks, all of which not only helps ensure that your devices are compliant, but keep the end user um, aware and informed of how to remediate device and take action. There is also category-based content filtering, the ability to enforce acceptable use policies, and even data capping to prevent overages and bill shock. So how can you ensure that you are simplifying work for your users, both in and out of the physical office, while protecting devices user privacy and sensitive company data. Well, the conversation often starts with a discussion of trade-offs. On one hand, users want simplicity and privacy. On the other hand, organizations need to achieve security and compliance. The discussion might sound something like, we need to secure these devices to be compliant. And unfortunately, the user experience may be impacted. Then there's the dirty little secret that Despite all the security that you have in place on your corporate owned devices, employees can often just choose to work on their personal devices where things are more simple and the privacy is respected. Now I'm highlighting the tension between serving your users needs and achieving your security or compliance objectives. Now many believe that there must be a trade off. At Jamf, we do not believe this trade-off is required, but what we do believe is it requires an honest assessment of the challenges faced in the modern workplace. Now, Jamf specialises in helping organisations manage and secure Apple at work, and nobody does it better or more comprehensively. I'd like to show you exactly how we bring together management and security to create an approach we call Trusted Access that brings together all we've covered in this webinar. Trusted access combines and connects the best elements of device management, identity and access workflows, as well as endpoint security, all the things we've spoken about already today. With trusted access, your employees can be productive on the devices they love while ensuring that your organisation trusts every user, every device and every connection made to work resources. Let's briefly explore the six elements of trusted access, starting with enrolled devices. 
Enrolled devices are critical foundation for achieving trusted access. We must have visibility into every device being used for work. An Apple Business Manager enables two unique enrollment workflows, as discussed earlier, that every organization should embrace. For corporate-owned devices, automated enrollment ensures that every device enrolls automatically the first time it's turned on. IT has full control over endpoints for the entire life cycle of the device. For BYOD devices, account-driven user enrollment allows employees to initiate privacy-protecting BYOD enrollment on their personally owned devices. Now, with user enrollment, IT maintains control over all company data on these devices without having any visibility into or control over personal information like messages, photos or apps. In either case, enrollment is built into all Apple devices, which eliminates risks associated with insecure enrollment URLs and invitations. Verifying each user's identity is another critical element of trusted access, and Jamf integrates with every major identity provider to provision local accounts with the user's cloud identity, creating a streamlined onboarding experience. Jamf also ensures that each user's password stays in sync with their cloud identity, minimizing IT tickets and employee downtime. Having the user's cloud identity bound to their device is important because you're able to utilize your existing cloud identity investment to map access rights management all the way down through to the user's local account. We also want to ensure that every endpoint is being used for work is protected. Now, Jamf makes it easy to audit device security benchmarks to ensure that a trusted user on an enrolled device isn't out of compliance with your required security settings. Additionally, Jamf constantly monitors endpoints for threats to automatically block and quarantine malware, keeping your endpoints protected and your data safe. The modern threat landscape is vast and risks span far beyond insecure configurations on malware. Jamf provides device-wide protection against phishing, malicious domains, ransomware and other web-based threats that pose a risk to your organization's data and compromises user privacy. We also provide simple security awareness notifications through the Jamf Trust app to help your users learn how to work smarter and safer. As I mentioned earlier, users are working from anywhere, from any kind of device. Now, Jamf offers zero trust access to work resources with continuous device security monitoring, which adjusts access in real time if a risk is, uh, uh, on the device is identified. And it works with any ownership model to provide a seamless experience that's always on, never in the way, establishing secure connections regardless of where the users are working. In an ideal world, nothing would go wrong, but when reality hits, it's important to have a robust set of automation and remediation options available when it's time to respond to a security incident. Perhaps you need to suspend a user's access, update an operating system, or update a vulnerable app. Maybe it's important to notify the user. The task will vary depending on the nature of the issue, but the, mo but the important thing is to understand that Jamf offers a robust device management foundation that allows organizations to resolve any number of different issues with powerful automation tools. So that's a quick overview of trusted access and why many organizations have some of these individual solutions today. I hope this shows you why we believe it's critical that all of these solutions be built to work together to secure the workplace from the threats we have identified, not only today, but in the future as well. If you'd like to learn more, check out jamf.com. So let's recap on what we have covered today. After covering Jamf with a quick overview, we looked at the importance of securing both on-prem and SaaS apps for remote work. This was followed by making access to, remote, uh, access to work resources for employees both seamless and secure, which leads us on to the problems organizations are facing with legacy VPNs before rounding up with securing both corporate-owned as well as BYOD devices. To finalize, I brought all the topics together and management and security under our overview of our trusted access journey. Finally, I'd like to leave you with some additional resources. And our first one is our ZTNA for Beginners Guide. Now, the QR code is on the screen. If you want to have a 
quick grab of your device and scan that for quick access. I'll also drop a link in the chat for you so you can access this quickly. Our endpoint and security and mobile threat defense solution for Mac and mobile is Jamf Protect. And the QR code is on the screen now if you want to get access to that and navigate to that quickly. Again, I will drop a link in the chat so that you've all got access to that. Um, but if you do miss any of these, um, they are available on jamf.com. In addition, I want to highlight some of our BYOD content. And our first up is our uh, Jamf Mobile BYOD versus uh, MAM, our mobile application management, with a focus on the fact that modern workplaces can no longer depend on MAM alone for their mobile BYOD programs. Now, BYOD devices must be uh, usable, secure and private, so you can learn how Jamf simplifies IT and InfoSec BYOD workflows and ensures protection and secure access of corporate data while maintaining user privacy. Now, next up is our BYOD uh, uh, Elevate security and privacy concerns, or alleviate, sorry, uh, user and privacy concerns, which looks at tapping into potential of BYOD devices where employees use their personal mobile devices for work and has challenges and includes two essential needs, which is organization security and user privacy. And finally, uh, our BYOD uh, privacy and user experience increases mobile um, BYOD by balancing IT security with user privacy and experience. And the reality is the success or failure of a BYOD program is the technology is usable, data is secure, and the privacy is protected. Now, this paper outlines how Jamf and Apple provide BYOD solutions which strike that balance, including privacy first, security matters to IT, BYOD for the modern workplace, and how Jamf and Apple ensure user privacy, security is a flawless experience. Now, I've dropped all the links in the chat, but if you miss them, simply head to jamf.com and search BYOD in our resources section of our website. That's it for this session. I hope you have found this insightful and learned some useful information that can help you in making remote work a success for both Mac and mobile devices in your organization.